Here's a little something else I've been working on. Little Ellen, I'll show you a clip. Squeeze your tushy tight, get on your tippy toes, and walk and squeeze around the room and... Little Ellen. Ellen DeGeneres. What could be said about her? Not even two years ago, she was one of the most beloved people in Hollywood, an outspoken member of the LGBT community and a defender of their rights. She was the host of one of the highest rated talk shows in the business, an actress loved for her portrayal as Dory in the Finding Nemo movies. Now, she's probably the celebrity who has burned through goodwill faster than any other not convicted with a crime. Controversies about her and her show exploded over the course of the pandemic years. We got stories about how she offered a possibly pregnant Mariah Carey alcohol so that she personally could break the story about a celebrity being pregnant before the woman was even ready to do so. People are saying that uh, that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. Um, <laughs> all right, well, you don't have to <laughs> No, that's okay. No, no honestly, you don't have I, to answer me. I... Let's just toast with champagne and decide. Wait. Let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh, we should... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you're pregnant. <laughs> you're pregnant. No, you I are pregnant. There were also more minor things, like yelling at a translate to translate faster, shaming audience members who didn't follow instructions. And if all of this was in front of the camera, you could only wonder what was going on behind the camera. Well, you actually didn't have to wonder for too long. In July of 2020, BuzzFeed ran a story involving several whistleblowers revealing that Ellen was a toxic person and a toxic workplace. Things like telling employees not to make eye contact with her were alleged. Instances of racism were alleged. It was alleged that every day she picked someone new to really, really hate. Just a whole lot of allegations. And throughout all of this, Ellen only really had two defenders. One was all of her celebrity friends that started bombing their own reputation in doing so. And the other was news organizations that didn't have a reputation to begin with. In doing research for this particular video, a lot of the news articles tried to downplay the situation about Ellen. And even once they gave a fair look at the controversy, did go into her long history and all of her great accomplishments in the past. However, However, despite all of this, her talk show was not able to survive the controversy, and it will be coming to an end after its 19th season later this year. Now, you may be wondering why I'm talking about this. If you've been on the internet at all in the past year, and let's be honest, you have, not hearing about the Ellen scandal is borderline impossible. There were so many videos talking about every little minutia of this controversy. The Right Opinion made a video over an hour long. You know all of this. What you don't know is that there was an Ellen DeGeneres cartoon that started airing last year. No, I'm not kidding, this is Little Ellen. I have many questions. Actually, I have just one question, but it's a big one. Whose idea was this? Yeah, that, that's the one. So, Ellen's career Hindenburged in 2020. This show came out in 2021. To be fair, it was in production since 2019, but this would be like releasing the Michael Jackson Experience video game a month after Finding Neverland. Or announcing a reboot of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids now. Uh, which reminds me about that, uh, little title. So, the show is called Little Ellen. It's a preschool show. Immediately, your mind has gone to Little Bill. If you don't know, Little Bill was a preschool show, uh, made by Bill Cosby, that aired at the tail end of the 90s. Yeah, look forward to the Nicarama episode about that one. If there's something that should be mentioned about Bill Cosby at this point, it's that he's, uh... I want the big one! Give me the big one! Why do you want the big one? He'll stop the drafts all winter, and in the summer he can give me shade! <laughs> is a controversial figure. So even before I watched the show, like even if we were to put out Ellen's entire controversy, like like let's pretend that everything there is still under NDA right now, a celebrity should not be naming their cartoon Little Anything. Cosby himself burned that bridge like no one's business. Doesn't matter if it's Little Ellen, Little Baldwin, Little Keanu, or Little Al. Mine goes straight to Little Cosby. I, I, I mean, Little Bill. I get that that show is old at this point, and the target audience of preschoolers might not, uh, get the problem, but Little Bill wasn't this obscure underground cartoon that no one had ever heard of. Like, I have to assume, and I actually hope that this is true, that the people who are making the show were legit trying to prank Ellen, because I don't want to believe that someone made this mistake by accident. Accidents. Now that that's out of the way, let me get something else off my chest. WHAT THE FUCK ARE THESE HELL DEMONS?! This show looks like a baby Hazel Flash game ate a finger family video and threw it up into a pile of glitter! 
The eyes! The fucking eyes! Funny story, I heard a rumor that Ellen's staff is forced to watch the show on their first day, so they internalize not to make eye contact with her. This show has one of the worst art directions that I have ever seen. It's not as bad as Problem Solvers, but second place is still admirable. Where do I even begin here? As I stare into the abyss, the abyss also stares into me. It makes me understand the meaningless in my own life. We are all destined to fall one by one like September leaves, cast aside and forgotten in the cold December snow. Such evil cannot be stopped, only appreciated. Uh, what was I just saying? I, I think I lost myself there. So this show is so ugly it makes me want to set myself on fire. Let's start with the most basic of problems here. The show takes after a picture book style. This is because Little Ellen is also a picture book. Yeah, here's something else you might not know. Celebrities almost universally make terrible children's books. Jimmy Fallon, LeBron James, Ricky Martin, Barack Obama, Kelly Clarkson, even Pharrell Williams of all people. You know, who was on the song Blurred Lines. The song that was so awful and offensive it probably single-handedly invented modern day political correctness. He wrote a children's book. And I know the obvious joke you're thinking of here, but you're wrong. I made my bad children's book before I got famous, so there. Anyway, while a show inspired by a children's book art style isn't inherently a bad idea, it is inherently a bad idea, and this cartoon is a pretty good showcase as of why. The most fundamental problem here is that none of the characters have outlines. For a picture book where an artist can frame every single part of every single image, it works fine. The problems start when the things in the drawing start moving around. Here's the biggest problem. Ellen herself is a light, white-skinned character. So when she does something like stand in front of a white-colored wall, or hell, even stand outside, she disappears. I'm gone! Because none of the characters in the show have any outlines, they often become amorphous blobs. Hell, half of the time Ellen's mouth disappears on her face because it's not dark enough. The show, more often than not, is visual nonsense. The decision to not have outlines in a show is not impossible to make work, but it is a challenge. And that's not something that could or should have been done with a show that's just trying to be a cheap cash-in like this one is. Probably the most famous show that foregoes outlines is Samurai Jack. Not having outlines works there because the characters are drawn in such a way where the outlines aren't really needed. Samurai Jack has this strong understanding of color. Even in a winter scene where this white character wearing a white robe is standing in a field of snow, like the Three Blind Archers episode, you know exactly where Jack is and where he is standing. His hat and his sword, which are different colors, help define him. But even beyond that, his robe is made of a gray or white, so he's not the same color as the snow. There are also cinematic tricks to help him stand out. But you don't even need to go that far. Another show that abandons outlines is, uh, once again, Little Bill. In that show, Bill's shirt is brightly colored, and it uses colors that aren't used in too much else in the show. And even the dark backgrounds in that show do not match Bill's skin tone. So, as a result, he never gets lost in the scene, while Ellen continually does. Honestly, maybe I should give Problem Solver some credit, because I did know who and what was on the screen. This is a problem that I have never seen in any other cartoon in the almost nine years that I've been doing this. Hell, in the almost 30 years I've been watching cartoons. And I know it's a moot point by now, but the actual design of the characters is just so uncanny. Like, there's no other way to say this. These characters look like bad clip art. Like something you'd buy off a scam website in 1998. Hey, Jack. And the audio, the audio ain't much better. I will reiterate this is a preschool show. With voice acting in preschool shows, the bar is really low. But then you remember that Sophia the First and Arthur exist. And then you realize that there's absolutely no excuse for this. <laughs> The voice actors try to mimic actually little kids, and that's a problem because it doesn't work. I really could just go on and on about the voice acting, but sometimes it's better to just listen to it. What do you need? I have Sunny's, tape dispenser, fresh gum pepper, Achoo! So that's what happens with Patrick Star's sister he said he didn't have. Also, you might want to return that backpack to Dora, I think she needs it. You've been having so much fun with her, I didn't think you wanted to play with me. Fun fact, Ellen's mother was a speech therapist, her character should not sound like this! Complaining about the voice acting, to be completely honest with you though, is a waste of time because we absolutely have to talk about the singing! If you just think of our favorite times, it might help with the bad, oh Charlie! Honestly, it kind of rocked my world learning that there was someone the Cats 2019 actually rejected. I gotta work harder on these songs. 
What? No, they're great. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'll eat the very best beignets of all time, because at festival, nothing goes wrong. Every single episode has at least one song, and I only stuck an ice pick in my ear three times. In ten episodes. I hear it in mono now, and life is just wonderful. We also have to talk about the theme song, because it is incredibly unique. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't call it good. Hell, I don't even know if I would call it bad. But it's the first theme song that I've ever heard that I actually didn't know was the show's theme song the first time that I watched it. The theme song failed to stand out in any way whatsoever to the rest of the show, and that is an impressive failure. So far, I've only really talked about aesthetics. I'm pretty sure you want to know what the show is really about. I mean, someone as well-lived as Ellen probably has plenty to teach the next generation. Like, standing up for yourself, fighting for equal rights, gaslighting, being a toxic shithole of a person. Let's watch the trailer. The best way to have fun is to be yourself no matter what. Wait, isn't that what got Ellen cancelled? Okay, I wasn't too sure about this before, uh, but this is clearly some pissed off employees trying to dunk on an abusive boss. Maybe Amazon has a better, more accurate description of what we're in for. Seven-year-old Ellen Degenerate, uh, sorry about that slip of the tongue. Seven-year-old Ellen Degeneres is a kid with a big heart, humor, and imagination. Wow, what some people lose in the aging process is just truly tragic. Little Ellen has a little bit for everyone. You hear that, everyone? You can't bully me for shitting on a preschool show. Ed's for everyone, Amazon said so. To be absolutely fair though, this is not a bad premise. Let's do some math here. Ellen DeGeneres was born in 1958. At seven years old, it would have been 1965. Now the 1960s were a tumultuous time filled with social unrest, protesting, and just just a ton of national tragedy here in the United States. I mean, there was the Kennedy assassination, most people know that, but it also had another Kennedy assassination, Robert Kennedy. There was also the Martin Luther King assassination. Even the guy who assassinated JFK got assassinated. There were the Stonewall riots. The Cold War's proxy battles fueled much of the chaos of the 60s, with Vietnam going through all of it. Bay of Pigs invasion was another big thing. But I mean, there was also times to be excited too, like with the moon landing or Woodstock. The 1960s were such a different world from today, but a talented individual could certainly craft stories and teach lessons to the new generation, and maybe even make some parallels to a lot of the events that even very young children are seeing today. I mean, you'd have to try and relate to the kids of today, but that can't be too hard, now can it? Do you know what this means? Bianca and Sebastian are relationship goals? I apologize that this video is a few days later than intended. I had to set my computer on fire and perform an exorcism. Gen Z slang in cartoons is something that's really beginning to annoy me. Actually, to be honest, it's not just the slang. It's kind of just the way that characters talk in cartoons now. Like, their tone of voice. Like, imagine someone as hyper as Mabel be way more self-assured than they have any right to be. That's like the main character in every cartoon now. To be fair, maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> For instance, my mother was born before 1983. Apparently, Ellen's mother wasn't. And as we all know, I am much older than Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, you probably don't know this, but I'm like 65 or something. You wanna know what the show has to do with a real life Ellen DeGeneres? Nothing. Okay, okay. It has one thing to do with a real life Ellen DeGeneres, and only one thing. Ellen grew up in New Orleans, and the show takes place in New Orleans. And if you're wondering, this character is explicitly referred to as Ellen DeGeneres in all the advertising materials and in the show itself. Speaking of which, Little Ellen is making me reference Little Bill more times than I'm comfortable with. One thing to note with that show is that the titular Little Bill isn't actually Little Bill Cosby. His full name is actually Bill Glover. He is not the same character as the real Bill Cosby. B but no, Little Ellen is Little Ellen DeGeneres growing up at a time with skate parks and 80s nostalgia and relationship goals? A concept of someone who grew up in the 60s, especially with the life that Ellen led. That is a powerful concept and it is a shame that it was wasted here. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. It's it's a preschool show. Look, if Arthur can do LGBT things and talk about 9-11, I'm not asking for too much. Mr. Rogers did this kind of stuff all the time. To be honest with you though, I'm kind of surprised that nothing like that is anywhere in this show. If for no other reason than brownie points. I mean, Ellen in the show wears a rainbow shirt, but there's, uh, I know what you're thinking, but they're cousins. And, uh, yeah, that's an awful lot of close contact for cousins. 
Look who's finally come out of the closet. What were you doing in there? I don't know if now is the best time to mention that every single episode starts with Ellen talking to herself in the bathroom for no reason. Alright, here's where things get a little bit ridiculous. Ellen had a brother that is not in this show, but she didn't have a cousin that is in this show. You can name the show Little Susie and it wouldn't be any different. I have no idea why Ellen's name is even on this. It's not about her or her life. Even the character that is Ellen, you could probably get away with using that exact likeness without being taken to court or anything. I'd say that this show was just a cheap way to make money, but you didn't even hear about the show until I brought it up. The shit that I had to go through to figure out this existed, I don't even want to get into. You really think that this is bringing any attention to HBO Max? So the characters are all one-dimensional. Ellen's grandmother is just weird for the sake of it. You know, it's the quirky grandmother that you've seen a thousand times by now. Freckle likes music. That's where his story begins and ends, and he won't be mentioned again for the rest of the video. Becky, though, Becky is the annoying one. Like, there really is nothing more to go on there. No one in the show has a personality. I mean, there's a lot of imagination sequences, like this is trying to be Doug or something. This show pales in comparison to Doug. It wishes it could be Doug. Every single joke is telegraphed. You have a cat lick too. I guess it's called a cat lick for you. See what I did there? Actually, I take that back. Every single everything is telegraphed in this show. I know this has never worked in any movie we have ever seen, but how about the old three kids in a trench coat disguise? What the f- And every single episode has more or less the same plot. You wanna know what the show's about? It's okay to feel sad sometimes. Like, I'm not even really joking. That's literally the plot of episode two. No, that is literally the plot. Ellen's cat is feeling sad, so they learn when someone is sad, the best thing to do is just leave that person alone. You see, if Ellen was actually involved in the show, the moral would probably be if someone was sad, is your obligation as an employee to cheer her up. But like I said, she had very little to actually do with this scam. So many of these episodes is about learning that sometimes things don't go as planned, and then throughout the episode, they learn that sometimes bad things happen and you need to accept it. And then every single time, I mean it, every single time, when they do accept it, every ending is all like, you won the prize, you're going to be rich. All of the good stuff you want to happen is happening! Seriously, episode 1, Ellen wants to go to some festival, but every single thing she wants to do either gets cancelled or interrupted or something gets in the way. Then, she finally accepts that things aren't going so well. Then she gets all the stuff she wanted! Actually, she gets better than what she wanted. They get to go on the stage with the celebrity they wanted to watch and get backstage passes for. Episode 5, the adults are having an adults-only game night. The kids try to join them until they realize they can't. They accept that they can't. And then the adults decide to join them and have fun with them, so they get what they want. I repeat, it's like every single episode. You ever watch that Hey Arnold episode, The List, where Arnold tries to do all of these exciting things on a Saturday and they don't work out in the end? Uh, it's basically watching that episode for 10 times in a row, except that episode works because all of the good stuff just doesn't magically fall into Arnold's lap at the end. I mean, there's the Halloween episode. Ellen is terrified of everything. She never faces her fears once, like her friends do. And then towards the end, her grandmother is all, You three spent all day trick-or-treating and facing your fears, and you never gave up, even when you thought things got too spooky. That episode, by the way, is also about how being seven years old is enough to go trick-or-treating on your own, in a big city, like New Orleans. And you know, maybe if this show took place in the 1960s, that would be much more believable. But in 2021, uh, no. Episode 4 is a jealousy story. I don't think I need to continue after that. Like, the really, really sad part here is that this show is abysmal, but not only do I not know if it's gonna make my top 10 worst of the decade, I don't even know if it's gonna make the top 10 worst cartoons of 2021. Like, last year just shout out awful show after awful show. You got what? Centaur World and the Ghost and Molly McGee. And between that, you got Rick and Morty going down the drain, Q-Force, High Guardian Spice, Masters of the Universe, Devil May Care, Santa Inc., Teenage Euthanasia, The Prince, and so, so many reboots and spin-offs. Flintstones, Yogi Bear, The Smurfs, again, Alvin and the Chipmunk, again, Two SpongeBob, Tom and Jerry, again, even Johnny Test of all things. With all of the just shit flying around, no wonder people didn't pick up on this one. I suppose this is my way of saying that I got a lot of catching up to do. 2021 was probably one of the worst years for animation of all time, and it's gonna keep me working for a very, very long time.
Hey, you've reached the end of the video. The names scrolling by right now are of all the wonderful patrons who've donated to help keep this channel alive. If you'd like your name in the credits, head on over and make a donation yourself. Also, be sure to check out my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for exclusive content and previews of my upcoming videos. I've also got a forum where you can discuss anything that has to do with my content and connect with the rest of the community. To find anything that I mentioned, just visit my link tree in the description down below. Lastly, be sure to subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends. Oh, and thanks for watching.